is one that everyone is not paying enough attention to because of smartphones and shit, which we were talking about a little bit before. How do we get people more excited about shit that actually matters? Oh, that's a good question. You know, I find like when I talk to people on an individual basis, people actually do care. Like I have yet to find someone who's like sitting there and says like, you know, I don't give a shit that, that children in Africa are still dying because of malnutrition or something, right? I think the, 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 the pieces for me, like in this puzzle to get people to really care about like the important stuff is helping people to find something they actually personally connect to in a, like a purpose and a passion sense and understanding that like, you know, like you might not connect to a particular cause. You might not connect to the fact that, you know, we run out of fresh drinking water in South Africa, for example, but you might connect to something else. So for, for us to like unearth that, what do you connect to? And then the second one is the common note I get is this like, it's overwhelming. I don't know where to start. And I get that. I mean, like a lot of these problems are pretty substantial and they can't be solved by, you know, a single person sitting somewhere doing something. But I was just on the phone with, um, with someone who's doing something around uh, plastic waste in oceans. And um, he's got this really amazing argument. He's basically saying like, listen, like, if you care about that, that subject, like the simplest thing you can do is don't drink out of a plastic bottle, right? It's a simple thing. It's like, if we are all like, you know, if we're starting to do that, we can actually change the course of history. So it's this like getting people like excited about something they care about and then giving them opportunities and showing them ways to m- do something which matters. And then there's, a, there's the, if they want to leap beyond that, then really connecting them and say, you know, for you to build a startup, like think about not building that startup as a, you know, whatever, social mobile photo sharing app, but build something which actually matters. Let's play, let's play devil's advocate a little bit. Sure. So you look, at, you look at the US and you look at China and they couldn't be more different and they couldn't be more similar. But one thing you'll see is that in the US, people talk about caring. Mm-hmm. And in China, the government says, okay, we're going to care. But then something actually happens. Mm-hmm. Do we get to the point where humanity needs a totalitarian government because the masses cannot do the things they should? They become obese. They litter and destroy the world. They do all of these things that they shouldn't because we're based off of short-term gratification, sex evolution, and all that good stuff. That's a fascinating question. I, I recently had a question, uh, a similar uh, debate with someone uh, who made a very compelling argument to say, listen, if you run a billion people nation, you can't run that nation in like a, a, like a democratic process. And he was contrasting China to India, which India at its core is democratic. You know, granted, it's like somewhat broken, but it is democratic. And then you've got the totalitarian uh, Chinese model. And, you know, clearly the Chinese model seems to work at least in lots of dimensions better than the Indian model. I think it's an interesting question. I think the the question for me becomes, can you find systems where you preserve individual rights in a meaningful way? So I I actually believe like ultimately we are post-democracy. Like we're moving towards a world which is post-democracy. I think that's the, the short version. What that world will look like, I don't know. Um, we have the Chinese model, and I think the Chinese model has some very clear flaws around, like, for example, your, pr- your personal freedoms. And yet it also performs fairly well in other areas, as you pointed out. So it's going to be an interesting space to keep an eye on. This has been another in our Fringe FM mini series where we take long form interviews and condense them down to high impact topics. If you'd like to get the full interview, check out the show notes or subscribe. Go to fringe.fm where you'll find tons of audio and video interviews with leaders in the fields of genetics, cryptocurrency, longevity, AI, space, VR, and much, much more. If you enjoyed the show, please leave a quick review in iTunes to help more people discover Fringe FM.